Hey guys, this is Jesse. I'm here with an FDL-1, uh, this particular model being the prototype model as seen in the Kickstarter campaign. I recently posted the design for the prototype FDL-1 on Thingiverse, uh, so I wanted to do a series of videos explaining uh, all the different components of the FDL-1, how to put it together, uh, what everything does, how I designed parts of it, uh, as well as how to hook up the electronics and we'll get into the code later on too. When I was a kid, I took a lot of things apart, and I really think that that contributes to how much stuff I actually make and put together today. Uh, so I think that everybody who's going to build an FDL-1 can really benefit from uh, me really taking one apart in front of you, explaining all the pieces as I go. You know, I think it'll put a lot of things in perspective. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from the barrel and kind of work my way back. Um, take all the electronics out. I'm not going to go into those real deeply because we'll do that at a later date and when we put it together. Um, and then in a second video I'll go through taking the turret apart and how that all works. Uh, so let's get started. So we'll go ahead and detach the electronic speed controllers in the front here. All right, and then we'll just unscrew the barrel and take it off. Uh, so what you got in the barrel are two brushless motors. Motors that would come directly off like a, you know, hobby drone or whatever. The cool thing about these is they're powerful and they are super fast. Um, so I really just wanted the thing to shoot really hard and that's kind of why I went with brushless motors. Plus I have a drone and so I already had some of the parts. Underneath. If the FD-01 manages to get really, really jammed, this would be your first thing to do is take this cap piece off of here and then you can get access to the dart inside. So in case you haven't seen this before, uh, this is a typical flywheel motor design. Uh, a lot of, you know, regular Nerf guns are designed this way. Uh, the point being the motors spin real fast in opposite directions, the dart comes in between, and they fling the dart forward, uh, just like a baseball pitching machine or one that shoots tennis balls or whatever. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take the motors off here. So another reason that I really like the brushless motors uh, is the flywheels are actually mounted by screws directly onto the motor. Uh, a lot of the other options out there have a shaft through the motor and then there's a really tight friction fit that the flywheels fit onto. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that design. I really like being able to screw things onto other things so that they're nice and sturdy. Um, so I'll take these guys off too. There you go. All right, so next we will take off this front plate and then we can talk about the revolver and the advanced switch a little bit. Uh, and then behind that piece you have the beast of the revolver. This is definitely your longest printing piece in the entire project, if that's what you're going to do is print the whole thing from scratch. Uh, so on the revolver there is a nub on the edge of each chamber, um, and on the side of the FDL-1 there is a switch right here that flaps in and out. Uh, so as the revolver turns, it flips the switch uh, on the side of the gun uh, so that it knows when it's reached the next chamber. So next we'll go ahead and take this switch off. Uh, and then we'll pull the speed controllers out of their clips here. Right, so you'd be kind of careful. These, these are a little delicate on the prototype. Um, I'm going to make these clips removable in the final version <coughs> so they're not so prone to breaking. 
Uh, and then we'll turn this guy around. Uh, I'm going to turn the, the elite screw on the turret. Uh, just so I get some better access back here. Uh, and I'll take these top braces off here. Uh, so at this point I'm actually going to take the rest of what is the blaster off of the turret. Uh, I just want to be able to, to access underneath here and be able to show you uh, the mechanics underneath a little bit. But I'll just loosen up the thumb screws. And unplug the power wire underneath. Um, in the prototype version, the turret is actually controlled by the photon, the microcontroller up top. Um, in the final version, I'm actually going to separate it out and have a photon in each. They're fairly cheap, so the amount of extra control that I get of having um, two separate photons really opens up a lot of possibilities. Uh, it opens up the turret, uh, be controlled with, you know, a remote control or even like a wired kind of like Nintendo controller or whatever. Um, and it opens up the possibilities for me to have a lot of user switches um, and extra features up top. So yeah, with the thumb screws loosened underneath, just slide the blaster off the top, undo this control wire from the back, and we'll slide that guy out of the way. So underneath here, we have a little bit of a power distribution. Um, so the power will actually come from the battery or from the turret underneath, however you want to power the FDL one up. Uh, it comes into these power sockets through the switch and then actually goes directly to the speed controllers, uh, which is kind of neat. The speed controllers have a, a low voltage that is just the right voltage to power the microcontroller on the back. Uh, one of the big reasons Actually, that I went with brushless motors too is because I could use these particular speed controllers to power everything on board. But the main power actually comes in through this kind of distribution point at the bottom and then goes out uh, to the motors and back to the microcontrollers. Uh, so we'll take this guy at the bottom. Alright, and so now I'm going to take these thumb screws the rest of the way out. This is actually what connects the back plate with that big front revolver body here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start undoing the electronics and get the wires out of here. It's a really good idea as you're building the FDL one to keep your wiring as neat as possible. There is a fairly large amount of it that ends up getting stuffed into the back here if you don't choose to trim and shorten as your wires as much as possible. Um, I mean, true with any other hobby things, you know, your wiring is half of half of the quality of your build. Uh, let's get a few more of these out of here, and then we can start looking at the mechanics. I'm just gonna yank all these out of here. I, the version that I posted of the prototype actually doesn't have this box in the back. I really don't like this. It's really hard to stuff all these wires in here and get everything neat and it just wasn't something that really worked out. So I went ahead and I mimicked the way that the electronics were mounted on the, the redesign of the prototype just so that everybody doesn't have to go through the process of getting stuff stuffed in there. It's really difficult so I did stray from the true prototype plan a little bit. Obviously do not have the FTL1 powered up when you're pulling wires in and out, that is a really easy way to short everything out and then you're out of photon or you're out, you know, stepper motor controllers or whatever. So just, you know, be careful. So I'll undo this back box. And at this point I can actually pull out the photon from the gun. So this is actually one of my favorite parts of the FDL-1, the particle photon. This is essentially what you would normally expect from an Arduino, except it has a Wi-Fi uh, chip built directly into it. Uh, this means when you want to go to reprogram the chip, you don't have to plug it in every time. You can just have it connected to Wi-Fi and remotely uh, flash your new code to it.
All right, so looking through the rat's nest of wires here, uh, underneath you see the two stepper motor controllers. Uh, so stepper motors are a little bit different breed of motors in that you don't just apply current to them and they run. Uh, what you do is you hook them up to these small driver boards and you actually pulse electronic pulses to it. Every time you pulse uh, a logic control to it, it steps the motor just a little bit um, up to 1600 steps to make an entire full circle. So you can start seeing how accurate these are. Um, when powered up, they hold their position as well, uh, which is really advantageous for a lot of the ways that the FDL1 works in general. So we will take the speed controllers off the power distribution. All right, so now we can start seeing what's going on underneath here. The FDL1 is made up of two things. You have your flywheels up front that spin real fast. Uh, and then in the back, you have one stepper motor that is directly attached to the revolver. Uh, and turns the revolver in precise increments. And then in the back, you have another motor that turns and pushes this plunger forward and back. Uh, on the back of here, there is also a micro switch uh, similar to the flap on the side of the revolver, except this mic micro switch tells the FDL1 when the plunger is all the way back. Steppers are very precise, but it also helps to have a stopper switch of some sort just to check in on where they are in position every once in a while. Uh, so, next up, let's pull this back plate off of here. Okay, with those screws all out, you just pull this whole piece out like that. And then you're left with just the plunger and the motor and the back plate and these rear braces and the plunger guide here. Uh, so next, I'll go ahead and take this motor out of the back plate. Okay, so on the front of that motor, you'll see this, this hexagonal adapter on this motor, and on the back of the revolver piece, there is a mating piece. Uh, so that actually slides into there, and that is how that turns. It's actually a, a direct connection. It's kind of cool. All right, so next up, we'll take these braces off of here. Uh, it helps for these to have like a long screwdriver taking it apart and also putting it together. Uh, this one's okay for now. I've done this a few times. And the other side. So at that point, uh, these switches and power connections are blocking these screws. Uh, to get the plunger guard off of here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. Alright, and the last piece on this back plate is this plunger guide. Alright, and to finish this up, we'll take the rest of this back uh, spinner apart. Uh, and we'll take this microcontroller out of here. Last but not least, take the back motor out. And there you go. That is the FDL1 blaster completely disassembled. Uh, in the next video, I will tear down the rest of the turret, uh, explain what goes into that a little bit. Uh, after that, I can do a series of assembly videos, uh, and then we can get into the code and the electronics and things like that. Uh, so, thanks for watching.